Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training and I'm going to give you a short tutorial about making up subtitles for YouTube. Now here's a video that I've made recently about EDS9 and as you can see down here, YouTube has put some subtitles on it. It's generated those subtitles automatically. I haven't actually typed them in. So let's just have a quick look at what they look like. Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training and I'm going to give you a quick guide and you can immediately see, okay, they've made some mistakes for a start. They haven't spelled Clark with an E, it's DBC training. And as you carry on, you notice some of it's right and some of it isn't. Now, my videos happen to be just a lot of me talking. So it's actually quite clear. There's no real background noise. So it's got the best chance ever of getting it right. And even then, it doesn't get it right a lot of the time or the words are in the wrong place. Now, you can edit your subtitles entirely on YouTube. If I click on the edit video button and it'll open up YouTube's standard interface which if you've done YouTube videos yourself you'll have seen this. One option we have along the top here is CC subtitles, uh, CC as in closed captions or subtitles. I don't really use closed captions in the UK but they're very popular in the States for subtitles but anyway that's what it means CC subtitles. So you click on that and you can see here you've got some automatically created subtitles. You can click on them and then it'll open up this interface where you can go through and adjust them. So I get a little playback window, I get a waveform down below it and you get the automatically created subtitles. So I could come in here and say, right, I want to actually change this lot. So I'm going to click on edit and then I'm going to start changing them. So let's for a start have hello with a capital. David Clark here from DVC training. So there we are. I've got the first section sorted out. Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training. And that's about right. I think training actually finishes there. So, so I could move that subtitle so it finishes there and starts where the words begin. Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training. But now I need another thing. I need another subtitle in there. So I'm going to press on the little plus button and I'm going to put in and I'm going to give you a training and I'm going to give you so it's, that one's probably needs to start a bit later that one needs to finish a bit later training and I'm going to give you a quick guide on but already I'm coming into slight problems because I'm trying to drag that edge and it's not dragging I'm trying to drag this one and put it in the right place and also you can easily make an error somewhere and they suddenly disappear off the page or you put things in the wrong place I generally find this is a bit of a pain for doing subtitles so I prefer to do it in another way and what I'm going to show you is how to do subtitles in another program. I'll show you how to use DaVinci Resolve because there's a free version that everybody can use and then I'll also cover how to do exactly the same thing inside of Premiere. So I could start completely from scratch in my other program or I could start from these subtitles here. First of all I'm just going to publish the edits. Just click again on that automatic thing so I'm back to where I was before I pressed the edit button and I'm going to come to where it says actions click on it and then choose to download the subtitles and you get three different formats. The one I'm going to choose is SRT. So I'm going to click on that and download the subtitles as a file. Now I can use that as a starting point for editing my subtitles in Resolve. Here you can see I've got the file I downloaded called Captions SRT. Now if I open that up and I'm going to open it up with Notepad, the simple Windows text editor, you can see that you've got the number of the subtitle the starting and ending points and the words. So obviously I could change the words in here, but what are these time codes here? Don't really know. So the simplest way I find is to go into a program and I'm gonna show you how to do this with Resolve. So I'm gonna open up Resolve. Now normally I'd have a project, which was the one I originally made the video with and I'd do the subtitles with that. I actually made this video using Edius, which doesn't do subtitles at the moment. So what I've got is an MP4 version of the clip and I'm going to do the subtitles to that. You can see I'm using Resolve Studio 15.1. Now I'm just going to make up a new project which I'll call Sub... I could use Resolve's Media tab to bring the clips in but all I'm going to do is actually grab them from here and drag them in. So the first thing I'm going to drag in is the piece of video and Resolve says, oh, your clip doesn't match the project. Do you want to change the project? Because Resolve is defaulting to projects at 24 frames a second my clip's 30 frames a second, and I would like it to be 30 frames a second project, so I say change. 
And there we are, I've now got my clip into Resolve. I could also bring in the captions. Now I can bring them in by going file and import file and finding them that way. You can see there's import media, import subtitle. I can use the media tab. But anyway, I've got the stuff in. I want to take the video clip and throw it onto the timeline on how to set up Edius for the first time. Now what I want to do is add in the subtitles. If I wanted to do it from scratch, I would basically add in a subtitle track here and start typing. So let's just show you that. So I'm just going to go to a blank area above the video on the track header, right click and say add subtitle track. And now you can see I've got a subtitle track there. It is possible that you can right click and say add subtitle track and nothing appears to happen. Because for you to be able to see these subtitle tracks, you've got to come up to this little icon and click on it and highlight the middle thingy at the top. You know, this is the part of Resolve where you can decide what size the audio track is and the video track is and whether it's just showing heads and tails and that sort of thing. Well, to see the subtitle track, you've got to click that. That's not clicked, which it isn't as a default. When you go add subtitle, it'll look like nothing's happened. So, so, click, click, then see your subtitle track. Next thing I want to do is to add in a subtitle. So what you do here is you then come up to the inspector. So if the inspector isn't open, click on the word inspector and it'll open. And because I've got the subtitle track selected, it'll say create caption. And then you click on that. It'll create your first subtitle and you'll type in the words, which in this case should be. So when you board Edius, you'll be given a serial number. So when you board Edius, you'll be given a serial number, and which finishes about there. Now, first subtitle. Next thing, and you'll be given a download link and you'll end up with file. So yeah, I want to do another subtitle, so I'm going to just come up here and click Add New, and then I'll type the next one in, and so on. So you can go through typing in subtitles all the way through like that and just adjusting them to fit. They're actually just very like using title tracks, except they won't be titles, there'll be a separate caption that you can turn on and off on the final video. Now say, I wasn't going to do that, I was actually going to start with the automatic subtitles and changing. So let me select those two and delete them. Go and make sure I'm back at the start of the timeline and I'm going to go up to the bin where I put the captions, drag them and just drop them onto the timeline. The very start of the captions is always the start of the first word. So don't stick them at the start of the timeline, stick them where the speaking starts. And then after that they should roughly match the words. So there we are, I've now put those on the timeline. Let's press the play button and see what happens. Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and I'm going to give you a quick guide on how to set up Edius for the first time. And yep, they're already not working tremendously well, and there are errors. But at least it's going to save me a bit of typing. I mean, the first words are... Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training. That is where the first caption I want is going to end. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to split it in two. You can split it by grabbing the razor blade and chopping, or you can use the keyboard shortcut. So let me just undo that, which is to select the clip and use the control and slash key, which will split it into two. Now I can come back to this bit and adjust the first words. So I'm just gonna select it, come up to the inspector and say, hello, David Clark here from DVC Training. That's it, first subtitle done. Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and I'm going to give you a quick guide on how to set up... And I'm going to give you a quick guide. Actually, that's this one. So uh, let's just grab those words and copy them and paste them into here. And I'm going to give you a quick guide on... Let's keep that as the second one. And I'm going to give you a quick guide on how to set up Edius for the first time. I actually don't need that one, so I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to move this one guide on how to set up Edius for the first time. Yeah, so far so good. So I got some words in there and even though I put the first one in the right place, they are a bit over the place. Next one starts here. So when you board Edius, you'll be given a... So when you board Edius... So when you're already asked here, you'll be... Yeah, whatever. That's your automatic subtitles. So when you've... Board Edius, you'll... Or Edius, you'll be given a serial number. Yeah, there we are, next one done. And you get the idea. I'm basically going through and putting these things in 
using the original automatic ones to help me do a minimum amount of typing, but to be perfectly honest, it's still quite a lot of typing. When I've done this, I've often wondered, is it even worth using the automatic generated ones? Why don't I just start from scratch? But anyway, now you'll notice for a start, there are things like here, I can hardly see the words over the top of my title in the background. If you click on that subtitle, you notice there's a second tab here called Track Style, where you can change things like the typeface of the titles and the color of the titles and all this sort of stuff. And I can do things like add on a drop shadow that might help me see it or add in a background. So I've got my little background in there. I can just adjust the width of the background and adjust the height of the background. And yeah, maybe that's going to help me see them better. Only thing is, all this styling doesn't make it through onto YouTube. YouTube will just take the words and add its own styling. So pretty much it's a waste of time fiddling around with the look of this text unless it just helps you see it whilst you're setting them up. You'll also notice that the track style there is affecting every single subtitle. It's giving all of them exactly the same look. Now this will be useful if you decide to make a version of this video with subtitles burnt in. It's just not useful for YouTube because YouTube will ignore it all. Anyway, once you've got your subtitles out, then all you've got to do is export the file and get it up to YouTube. Now I'm going to save my project, make sure I've got this selected, and the obvious thing is to go up to file and then choose export subtitle because that seems a sensible way of doing it. Alternatively, you can right click on here and say export subtitle. And if you do that, you get the option of what format to export it in. Now, YouTube likes .srt, so I'm going to keep it like that. That's exactly the same kind of thing that we used when we downloaded it. The only thing is I seem to have found a bug which is in 15.1 version of Resolve that if you do that and try and export it, it'll crash and won't export it. And I've told Blackmagic about it and maybe it'll be sorted out in a future version so if you're not using 15.1 it won't be a problem. It might also be just a Windows problem. I don't know. All I know is that every machine I've tried it on, if I go File, Export Subtitle is currently going to crash. So the other way to do it is you go to the Deliver page and you export the subtitles and the video together. Now in the deliver page you don't have the option of just exporting the subtitles so I've got to do both. What you do is obviously you choose the format of file that you want to export and set all the settings up and then on the video section of the deliver page you come down to subtitle settings and click export subtitle and here you have the option of do you burn it in so it'll actually write it into the video itself or do you do it as a separate file? Again, to go off to YouTube, I need the separate file option. If I was saying going off to Facebook, where you're not allowed to have sound, so you can only have subtitles, then I'd probably burn it in. Now, if I choose to burn it in, that's where all these colors and everything else that I set up in the inspector have an effect. But now I'm gonna do a separate file. I'm gonna export it as an SRT. And then down here, you have what subtitle track would you like to export? Now I've only added in one subtitle track and it's called subtitle one. So obviously that's the one I want to do. If I would added in another subtitle track and maybe I'd rename that and maybe call that English. Then if I came to the deliver page, I'd have the option of doing subtitle one, the original one and the one that I've just made or whatever. Obviously, I'm just doing subtitle one. Then I'm going to export a file and I'm going to export the subtitles with it. Now, if you've already edited it, like I've already edited this stuff and I don't really need a file, I found the only quick way around it was to choose to actually not export the video at all, just export some sound like a WAV file. And on the video tab, tick subtitle, that'll do a sound file and a subtitle file. Obviously, the much better option would be if the export subtitles on its own worked. But anyway, blosh decide where it's going to go, start render, and then wait for it to go through and knock it up. So as I say, it's making a sound file and it'll make for me a subtitle file with it. Now that's finished, have a look in the folder where that's been saved and you can see I've got a subtitle file there, subtitle1.srt. I'm gonna open that up with notepad and you can, yep, you can see I've got exactly the same stuff, but the times have changed and the words have changed. To get that onto my YouTube video, go back to YouTube, choose the particular file, go back to subtitles, and say add new subtitles. Now, obviously it's got some English ones on there. I could choose a different language if I'm loading up other languages, but now I'm choosing English UK, because that's what I've got. And then it says here, upload a file. So all I do is click on that, and I'm gonna use a subtitles file, choose it, upload it, 
And bosh, my new subtitles are now on the video. Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and I'm going to give you a quick gun. Click on Publish, and then that's it, you've done it. I now want to get rid of the automatic subtitles, so I just click on them, and now I've got two options. One is to unpublish them, which means they're still there, but people can't see them. Or you can come over to Actions, and then choose Delete and it will completely delete those subtitles. Because I don't want two different variations of English subtitles. I don't want the automatic ones as well as the ones that I've just made up in Resolve. And that's all there is to it. Now, one of the reasons I like using Resolve is simply that it's obviously very simple to whack them on the timeline and it's very simple to line them up. I've done this after the event, but you know, you might be putting the subtitles on as you go through it. And of course, if you're going through and you're editing, you might suddenly decide to chop out a bit in the middle. The nice thing about these subtitles is if you do that, everything moves around. The subtitles will move around and match the video because they're acting just like regular titles. They're just done in a different way. Also, you can use all the keyboard shortcuts that we're used to using in Resolve to move things around. So if I click on the end, I can use the trim keys, which is the full stop and the comma to make it one frame bigger or one frame smaller. I can do things like say, I want the title to end there. So you stick the cursor where you want it to end. You click on the title and you click E to extend the edit and it moves the edit to wherever the cursor is. It only works if you've clicked on the actual edge. If I click on the title itself, it won't do anything. But if I click on the join, then it will change the start or the end point. So it basically they act like clips, but they are subtitles. There are things which will disappear if you've set them up in the right way. You might also say, okay, well, how can I use that to make subtitles for a DVD? Because obviously DVDs have subtitles. I've just made some subtitles. Can I use these in another program? Unfortunately, the two programs that I use on a regular basis, which is Adobe Encore and DVD Architect from Magic, don't load up the kind of captions that Resolve will make. Don't load up SRT files or the other format that it does. You can convert them, but you just have to go off and get a program that's able to do that. And there are some free ones around, but out of the box, they don't do it. And also DVDs can be a bit picky about how close together the subtitles are. So I found when I've taken subtitles out of here and then put them into Encore by converting them, they still need a bit of work because the joins are too close together. You've obviously got on a DVD, it's the same as chapters, you know, all the, the joins and things have to go on iframes. And if they're not in exactly the right place, then there's going to be overlapping subtitles or subtitles that are a bit too long or whatever, which is a bit of a pain. You still have to go through and tweak them, unfortunately. Mainly I've used this for YouTube. I could have used the way YouTube does it. I just find it's easier to do this inside of Resolve than inside of YouTube. 